friends, in this video we're going to share with you our first impressions of Nepal, from the interactions with locals to parts of this country that many don't even know exist. And of course, to give you a full picture of this land, we will also show you the worst things that happened to us and how we truly felt like our lives were in danger. That was scary. So make sure you don't miss this extreme part at the end of the video. But for now, let's go back a week or so and start our journey with the last day we spent in India. Friends, today is our last day in India. You can probably see it. No more Indian mustache. This thing needs to go. I've been looking forward to this. After spending a little more than two months in India, we were quite excited to once again be driving towards a new country. Don't get me wrong, we saw some incredible places in this country, but it was also quite tiring and intense. Yeah, we have a bit of a party there. Just makes travel in this part of the world extremely difficult in your own vehicle. Our last hour driving towards Nepal border sums up the experience quite well. First, it was just some narrow country roads that took us closer to our goal. And then, about one kilometer before the crossing, things got very intense very fast. We've been here for over half an hour, just standing in the middle of the railway before the border. It was one of the worst traffic jams I have ever seen. And many times we felt bikes hitting the side of our van and cars rear-ending us. And there is so much chaos, so much chaos. <laughs> Just look at that guy. I guess it truly requires skill to hit the van and a tuk-tuk at once with a small bike. And the worst thing, this traffic had nothing to do with a border crossing. This just sums up Indian driving culture so well. There's a train ahead and instead of forming one lane, they literally blocked both sides of the road on both sides of the railway. And thanks to this, everybody had to wait an extra hour. Well, as you probably realize, we were quite happy to leave this traffic behind. Entering Nepal! For locals, there is no checks on this border point and everything runs smooth. And for tourists, it's quite funny as well, since entering the immigration office felt more like visiting someone's country house. The immigration office is just so chill, like a little garden, just like a regular house. The process was fast and finally, it was time for us to start discovering Nepal. We officially entered Nepal. Getting here was not easy. We literally had five car crashes today. Traffic here is crazy. Five a day. First town we found ourselves in was called Pirgunj. And straight away, we were happy to see that things here were quite different from what we were used to in India. And I just have to say that the streets are so clean, it's, it's even a little weird. <laughs> but we traveled like five kilometers from India and here you just look at it yourself. Well, and the next thing we straight away experienced was Nepali hospitality. There was two guys, they just found us on the street and they're helping us out. They helped us find a SIM card, now we're looking for a currency exchange, a gift from, from above. Nikhil and Bragyan were both school kids and they said they saw us in trouble and just wanted to help us out. We even tried offering them money for their help and the few hours they spent while helping us. But they refused and said that it had nothing to do with their personal gain. What an amazing way to be welcomed in a new country. And after insisting a few times, at least they allowed us to buy them dinner. Guys, from the bottom of our hearts, once again, 
thank you for showing us your hometown and giving us such a good first impression of Nepali people. In the following days, we started learning more and more about Nepal. Entering a new country is exciting. It is exciting. There is a whole new culture, even if they're neighboring countries. And there's like, you see the subtle differences that you haven't seen before or which were not there for the past weeks or months. And it's all like the small things are exciting. This place is definitely much greener and has much more forest than we expected. But there was one thing that really came as a surprise to us. In our heads, we always pictured this country as a place full of snow-capped mountains and its people as Sherpas carrying big loads on their back up and down the mountain sides. Oh, very heavy. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. Hi, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, the guy has 50 kilo bag of cement on the back, it's half my size, and I'm complaining about the stairs. I'm a little bit of shame, <laughs> a little bit ashamed now. Who could blame us, right? This country is known to have the highest mountains in the world, but as it turns out, the majority of Nepali people actually live quite differently. Before coming here, we had no idea that the southern part of this land is actually a tropical grassland. We have now made it down from the mountains and even in a car you can feel how hot it is. Locals here mostly work on agriculture, growing tropical fruit, corn, rice, and it's polar opposite to the snowy mountain tops. Without joking, it is so hot here that people carry umbrellas just to protect themselves from the sun. And to top it all off, one can also find jungles here, where grass grows so high that even elephants can hide in it. But we will definitely talk more about this adventure in one of the coming videos, because never ever did I think that we would go on a walking safari in a rainforest that has more than 100 tigers. There's bones and deer fur in this poop. Can you guess who it belongs to? That was scary. After briefly getting to know this warm and exotic side of Nepal, it was time for us to head north, towards the capital of this country, Kathmandu where we got the better glance at local people and their religion. And of course, it doesn't matter which part of Nepal you go, the colorful prayer flags are just a huge part of the culture here. Like each and every one of them has a writing, like a message, a prayer, and when they flap in a the wind, they send those good wishes, good vibes into the universe. Although the busy streets and hectic traffic of Kathmandu can be scary at first, then only after spending few hours in this city, we realized that it's not even half as intense compared to what we had experienced in India. It even felt a little weird, because there are many things that those two countries have in common. For example, the main religion, which comes together with similar traditions. Then, of course, Hindu temples and loving attitude towards animals. Look at that monkey go. Somebody just half finished the lassi and he's just drinking it, enjoying it. But for some reason, Nepali people felt much more relaxed. I'm really not sure if it's the strong Buddhist influence this country has, or maybe the culture here is just more reserved since there's not as many people. But for us, travelers, it made the whole experience so much more enjoyable. We spent days wandering the colorful and vibrant streets of this city, immerge ourselves in local culture. And in all of this time, almost no one tried to scam us or asked to take a selfie with us, which was a huge relief after spending months in places where this happened tens of times each day. Oh, sorry, I actually just remembered. There was one taxi driver who tried his luck. 
We're just in the middle of the road now. Taxi driver wanted to ask us double the price. Yet, don't get me wrong, this more relaxed attitude wasn't because the locals did not care, but just the way of communicating here is much different. And for us, relatively quiet Northern Europeans, this kind of communication through smiles and warm looks felt much more comfortable and made us feel at home. And I know it might sound like a cliche, but often their looks say more than thousand words. Yet, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, there has also been one thing in Nepal that has truly shocked us and even made us worry about our lives and well-being. And this has to do with the most famous part of this land, the mountains. We are now on top of a viewing tower and if you look very carefully, then over there we can see Mount Everest, then uh, around there what carefully. is the Annapurna. The Pali mountains are known all over the globe and the northern part of this country is covered with those snow-capped peaks. Before Covid, nearly a million tourists visited this country each year to lay eyes on those giants. And many say that Nepal has some of the best hiking and trekking routes in the world. I'm sure in the coming weeks we will also find courage to hike in the Himalayan mountain range and we will definitely bring you along with us. But sadly, there is also a darker side that goes hand in hand with living in and between the mountains. We were just driving on one of the mountain roads near Kathmandu and we saw just tens and tens of people rubbernecking and something's happening and down there a truck hey, what's up? has just gone off the road. It is extremely hard to build proper roads in such uneven landscape. And therefore, I would say that Nepal has the worst road conditions I have seen in more than 50 countries that I've visited. It's just hard to accept that this road just full of holes, made of gravel pretty much is the main highway of the country. It's quite normal that covering a distance of 100 kilometers can take between 5 to 6 hours on so-called highways. And you know what? I really wouldn't mind the time it takes because most of the way the views are incredible. But what is hard for me to understand is that as soon as locals enter traffic they lose all the politeness and calm we experienced while meeting them. Every year thousands of people lose their lives in this madness. And although we have only spent a short time in this country, then already on many occasions we have felt a direct threat on our lives. Most common of such incidents is when a bus or a truck suddenly decides to overtake someone on a steep mountain road, forcing the opposite traffic to drive off the road near a cliffside to avoid a head-on collision. Unreal! Just unreal! And well, call me a wimp or a snowflake if you need to. But risking the lives of others in traffic is never okay. No matter how big is your vehicle. Tired of this traffic! I'm very tired of this traffic! Well friends, there it was, our first impressions of Nepal. And as you probably understood, we are quite excited to be here. We are not gonna let rain ruin our day in Kathmandu, <laughs> some poverty. This country is full of surprises, in both nature and people alike. We truly cannot wait to show you more of this country in the coming videos. But as the last thing, and a bit of a unsolicited advice, I would say if you also plan to come here, better not do it with your own car. Take care my friends and see you on the next one.